How y'all doing? I'm Justin Wall. I'm from Benton, Arkansas. Today we're going to go over something very beautiful and life-giving. It's how to see the true powers of the Holy Spirit's voice and not just hear them. You see the words of the Bible light our path, but the numbers are how we diligently seek His gorgeous voice. We go through a lot of one through fives a lot because that's what God usually mainly uses. Okay? If you look up Genesis 1.10, it'll tell you that He called the dry land earth. Okay? Three, four, five. Okay? That's a major pattern that you're going to see all over this lifetime because, because God uses the main numbers 1 through 5 the most because 5 means grace in this Bible. B-I-B-L-E-G-R-A-C-E. -E. See? Grace. Okay? And he shows us through parables, through the main power numbers like 111 or 222 or 333, 444 or 555. It stops there because God don't want you to choose 666 as a power number. Okay? And then it starts over at 1010, 1111 or 1212. But all of this beautiful evidence, God's voice being the numbers to us through the numerical pattern of the Bible, starts off in biblical days first. Okay, we're just planting in the seeds. See, I'm just Paul planting. You have to be Apollo's water for God to give you the increase with all this. To all the baby Christians out there, the first Peter 2-2s, two therefore, you being newborn babes, desiring the sin-sealed milk of the word that you may grow thereby, we ask and urge y'all to please jump on board with this. It's the true powers of the Holy Spirit's voice to us. You see, the words of the Bible light our path, but the numbers are how we diligently seek His voice. Each number is a different name to it. God calls it a different name. We call it numbers. He calls them parables. He calls them names. Okay, so we're going to start off with two first. Division double for your trouble. Okay, and we're going to learn threes. But today we're showing you how, and you always go in sequence. You said the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. You wouldn't say this, the Son, the Father, the Holy Ghost. Okay, so two comes first. So two in the Bible means division first. Always in sequence, double for your trouble. The reason being, is because we're born into sin. Okay, so you start off with the vision first, then you become born again in the spirit. Okay, when you become born again in the spirit, you get nine fruit and nine gifts. That's division double for your trouble in the sequence. See how it works? Your old man becomes dead, and your new man becomes alive. That's division double for your trouble in the sequence. You see how it works? Well, it started off with God dividing from the devil and gave us Jesus in the spirit. That's division double for your trouble in the sequence. Jesus had to be second in command because he had to divide from us to give us the blood and the spirit. Division double for your trouble. Doesn't matter whose life it is because if it wasn't for Judas kissing Jesus, we couldn't have got the blood and spirit. That's division double for your trouble in a sequence. Praise God that Judas gave up Jesus. Praise God it was in the word of God. Praise God for the word of God. <laughs> okay, well, Moses wrote two, ten tablets, uh, ten, <laughs> thank you Lord, I fall short of the glory of God every time. Moses wrote Ten Commandments on two tablets of stone. That's division double for your trouble in the sequence. Okay, Noah and his family got on an ark with animals two by 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 two. That's a lot of division double for your trouble. The men in the flood perished. That's division. See, never it never fails. Adam and Eve divided from the Word of God, and and they got had to work by the sweat of his brow and. Eve got labor pains. It doesn't matter if you react appropriately to God's word, like Job did when he, when he divided between his children and possessions. And in Job 42.10, it says that he prayed for his friends that come against him, and he got twice as much back. Division double for your trouble. Or it doesn't matter if you react appropriately to the flesh and your evil deeds, like Cain did when he killed Abel. Division. Okay, he still got double for his trouble, though, because he got a mark of the beast put on his forehead, no man could kill him, and no man would want to kill him. Okay, so that protects him, and, and so to speak. And then he got to go to out of a town and got banished into a town where he found his wife. See? <laughs> so even though he killed his brother, Division, God still gave him double for his trouble in a sequence. You see how that works? It never fails. God never fails. This word is always everlasting and everlasting. Okay, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's division. Double for your trouble in a sequence. He's the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end. See, the Alpha and Omega. That's division. Double for your trouble. He's the great El Shaddai. That's the that's direction. <laughs> that's direction. See, I fall short of the glory of God every time. <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> it's so beautiful, actually. I love it. 
it helps me. Romans 2.11, for there's no partiality with God. So what he did for the men in the Bible, division, he's going to do for us, double for our trouble. Never fails, whatever the sequence is. Romans 8.6, to be carnally minded is death, division. To be spiritually minded is life and peace, double for your trouble. See, God makes it rain and makes the sunshine on the good and the evil, and he makes it rain on the just and unjust. That's division, double for your trouble in the sequence. You see, it never fails. You see, Naomi and Ruth divided between their husbands. Ruth's got Boaz. Naomi got Ruth and Boaz. That's division, double for your trouble in the sequence. See how it works? It never fails. The scenario never fails. It doesn't matter who we are. God bless you. I love you, brother. It doesn't matter who you are, who we are, who they are. It doesn't matter. If it's two in the Bible, it means division first. Always in sequence, double for your trouble. Okay? Like Elijah and Elisha. Two men. In 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah has to depart from Elisha. Elijah says, what can I leave you? And Elisha's like, I need double portions of your spirit. See? He goes, okay, well, if you see me depart, you shall have it. If you don't, you won't have it. That's division double for your trouble. He saw him have it. Boom, so he's get double portions of his spirit, okay? In 2 Kings chapter 2, he also takes Elijah's mantle, slaps it on the ground. The water goes this way and that way. That's division double for your trouble in a sequence. Elijah uh, goes to a city, and they're like, here, this, this ground is barren. It's good, but the water's no good. So he's like, give me a bowl and some salt, division, and he cured the land. Double for his trouble. See how it works? It doesn't matter if, 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 if the stranger's on the ground and two pass by, division, but the good Samaritan picks him up, double for his trouble, and takes him to the innkeeper. And he says if his payment succeeds his limit, he should come back and pay it the rest of his payment. That's division, double for your trouble in the sequence. The two men that hung on the cross with Jesus, one denied him, division. The other accepted him, double for his trouble. The blind man was covered with mud first, division. Right? Then he saw through two eyes, double for his trouble. You see, it never fails. The scenario never fails. Every single sequence that has two in it, that means division. You see? Every single sense. Every single sense sequence. Thank you, Father, for, for letting me pause short the glory of God. Now, three in the Bible means direction to God. We call it three, but God calls it direction. If you call the number what God calls it, you'll see it more clearly. Okay? So say, for instance, God's name is G-O-D and I am. I am for a reason. Okay, every single three in this Bible means direction. Okay, he wants you to be directed to him, G O D. He wants you to be directed to him by the author of the verse in the chapter, by Old Testament poetry, New Testament. But the main one that directs you to God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, so every single time you see that three in the Bible, that's what it's pertaining to. The Holy Spirit directs them because he's the third one in line and he's the Lord of righteousness. He is our righteousness, he is our direction. Proverbs 3, 6, which is equivalence of three threes. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That's the truest scripture I've ever seen in my life. That's all I do all day long. He taught me how to acknowledge him. He taught me how to see him through the fear of the Lord. And once I started seeing his numerical pattern of the Bible being his voice, it put the fear of God into me. Much given is much expected. You see, with much, no much knowledge comes much sorrow, you see, because, because a lot of people don't understand what's going on. Uh, in this life with these numbers and they've been coming against me in other areas of my life and it's okay because John 15 19 says if you were of the world the world would love its own but you are not of the world because I have chosen you out of the world so the world shall hate you God clearly tells us that not everybody it's not for everybody see there's going to be swine out there he tells you not to cast your pearls before the swine you see, every time you get three in your life, it means direction from God. You understand? Abraham saw what it sacrificed Isaac on the third day. Moses was hit for three months. Jonathan shot three arrows for David's direction. Okay? Mordecai and Esther fasted three days and three nights. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. It took him three days to go to Nineveh. Okay? John, James, and Peter went to the Mount to see Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. Okay? And they actually built three great tabernacles. Direction. See, it doesn't matter the scenario. Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus asked him three times, does he love him? On the third time that he revealed himself to his disciples. It doesn't matter the equation, guys. Whatever the scenario is, if it has three to pertain to it, it means direction from God. Joshua took three days to cross the Jordan. 10,000 army whittled down to 300 army and won the war. 
Jehoshaphat in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 through 22, all they do is say, praise the Lord, His mercy endures forever. And guess what? They beat three, three armies. The Lord subdued three armies for them. And all they did was praise their problems away. It doesn't matter the sequence or scenario. Every single three in that beautiful testament, it means direction. First Kings chapter 17, Elijah prays over a widow's dead son three times, uh, widow's dead son three times, and brings him back to life. You see how it works? Never, never fails. Daniel prays three times a day. Okay, in Numbers chapter 22, Balaam's riding a donkey, and an angel gets in their path. The angel makes her veer off the path three times, and, and Balaam whips her three times, and she talks. This is going to prove that that the donkey talked. This is going to back that up. This is going to prove and back that up. <laughs> See? Every single three in that beautiful testament means three. It means direction to God. So if you call the number what God calls it, you'll see it more clearly. Okay? Every single three in that beautiful testament means direction from God. Every single one. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's direction. What he did back then, he said, he still does to this day. 2 Timothy 1 7, for the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. John 10, John 10, 10 for the devil's here to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. You see, every single three in this life means direction from God. It doesn't matter if it's Romans 5, 3, and 4, to glorify your Father for trials and tribulations. Through trials and tribulations, produce perseverance. Perseverance produce character, and character produce hope. It doesn't matter what three it is. See? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now, now, hope, faith, and charity are the greatest, but the greatest of these three is charity. Okay? It means direction. <laughs> direction to tell you what to do. Love people. Okay? Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Ready? Booyah! Hallelujah! <laughs> okay. Go in sequence. Two for division, double for your trouble. This is a division sign, so it's going to have a lot of twos in it. Ready? Boom. Do not. Division. Enter. Double for your trouble. Do not enter. Division double for your trouble. All the way down. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. It's white and red. That's division double for your trouble in a sequence. Okay. Boom. If you come over here. Boo, yeah. It's totally different. See? Division. Right? Double for your trouble patterns. Boom. Or actually, it's division. Double for your trouble. Big letters, little letters. Okay. Division. The patterns change from words to patterns. Division, double for your trouble in a sequence. And then two, T-O is division. <laughs> see how that works? It's going to have a lot of twos on it. You see how it works there? Okay, back on this side. Ready? Three for direction. Obviously. Boom, boom, boom. Three for direction. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three words apiece on three patterns. That's called direction from God. Okay? Now do you ready to see the hidden numbers? Remember how we was telling y'all in other prior videos that, that sometimes you got to add the numbers together to make a bigger number? Okay. Well, let's see. Do not enter. Do not enter. Do not enter. That's nine words. <laughs> ready? Booyah! Hallelujah! So you get nine fruit of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Spirit. Nine means spiritual completeness to the Lord. This sign is in spiritual completeness because it has nine words on it. See? Boom. Nine words. But it's also got three dash marks. Three for direction. Right? Okay. I left that one out. Sorry for the author confusion. But nine. Nine means spiritual completeness. Okay? So you get nine fruits of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Spirit. That's why Abraham received his promise. 1 John 2.25. Now this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Okay, well that's the promise that Abraham received at 99 because you get nine fruits and nine gifts. That's 99 if you put them together in a sequence. <laughs> ain't he powerful? Ain't he almighty? Ain't he glorious? Ain't his word everlasting? Everlasting? Ain't it the most powerful thing you've ever seen in your life? Okay, well in Genesis chapter 9 verses 10 is when God tells Noah that, that he's, he's going to put the... Uh, establish the covenant, the Holy Spirit, and all 40 footed beasts and creepy things and creepy things that creep on the earth. And he put the Holy Spirit in everything. So the earth is spiritual completed in Genesis chapter 9, verse 10. 10 is when it gives you something, but that's another day. But the truth of the matter is, Genesis chapter 9, verses 10 is when God establishes the Holy Spirit and all four footed beasts. That's why he promises to never flood the earth again, is because the Holy Spirit's in every li living organism. 
the trees blow and sway in the wind whenever God breathes His breath of life on them because they have a living organism in them. They're worshiping the Father. Do you hear these birds singing and chirping out here? They're not getting our attention. They're praising the glory of the sunrise coming up in the east because Jesus Christ is the sun. Read Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus has sent these angels to the churches to testify that, that I am the root and offspring of David. I am the bright morning star is what Jesus Christ says. Jesus Christ Himself in red letters tells you that He is the bright morning star. There's only one star in the morning. The S-U-N. Parable. S-O-N. It's the light of the world. He's the light of the world. He brings life into everything. Do you think you're really seeing a big ball of gas up there? That the scientists have told you that it's gas? It's not. They know what the truth is. They know the truth to set you free. They know that Jesus Christ is standing up in that sky up there and called heaven. See, because in Mark chapter 13, verse 24, 25, it'll let you know that the stars will fall from heaven when he returns. Where are the stars at night? They're in the sky. It's a parable. It's to show you that the stars are in the heavens. This is the heavens up above. And the light of the world gives you beautiful life and brings life into existence. And he lets everything grow towards him. All the trees, all the plants, everything grows towards God. In spiritual completeness because God put the Holy Spirit in every living organism every four-footed beast every creepy thing on this creeps on this earth in Genesis chapter 9 verses 10 and he promises not to flood the earth because of that reason and gives us a rainbow to show us the ferment because the rainbow is in a curving pattern which is called the ferment and if all these threes and the Bible means direction. All the threes in this life mean direction. All the twos in this life mean division double for your trouble. And all the twos in the Bible mean division double for your trouble. And if all the nines in the Bible mean spiritual completeness. And Daniel's three friends got tempted three times in chapter 3. And that's exactly why they got to walk out of the fire with the fourth looking like the Son of God. is because they were spiritually completed in Daniel chapter 3. Getting tempted three times by three friends. That equals nine. That's the same pattern you're seeing over there on that road sign there. God never changes. And if you read Genesis chapter 1, it'll clearly tell you that there's a ferment above us. A ferment of water above us and a ferment of water below us. Every single thing in this beautiful testament is the truth. If one thing in that Bible is true, all of it's true. And if you read Genesis chapter 1, you'll realize that the earth is really flat. And that sun is really Jesus Christ's aura. You see, that's not a big ball of gas the scientists want you to believe in. It's Jesus Christ's aura. You see, that's how bright He is. And He's just simply waiting for His return to come back to us. He's looking down on us from the heavens where the stars will fall out of. Stars will fall from the heavens. Where are the stars located? It's a parable. They're in the heavens. That's exactly right. Every single nine on this, on this Bible means spiritual completeness. Every single nine in this life means spiritual completeness. So you go through nine months of labor, spiritual completeness of your baby. If I put in your nine social security digit numbers, I know exactly who you are. Height, color, hair color, eye color, it doesn't matter. Spiritual completeness. I know who you are. You know what God's favorite pastime sport is? Baseball. It's, got, it's the only one with nine innings. <laughs> Spiritual completeness. <laughs> See? And what's so beautiful about two? Two causes division, double free trouble in a sequence. Every football game to the NFL for direction to their business. You, you got a two-minute warning to divide you from the game. Oh, the MLB for direction to their business. You get a seventh inning stretch, which leaves two innings, eighth and ninth inning, <laughs> for division from the game, you see? <laughs> he never fails. He's so beautiful. He's so beautiful, guys. Y'all, please jump on board. Please subscribe at the bottom. Please like and share. Please comment. Let me know what you need to know, what numbers you need to go to. We'll take it to the Holy Spirit and take it to Scripture and show you the way, the truth, and the life through the Word of God Himself who interprets all this for me because I, uh, it's not me doing it, I promise you. I promise you it's not me doing it. I believe it's 1 Peter 1, 19-21. We'll let you know that it's no private interpretation of man, but only by a holy man of God that gets moved by the Holy Spirit. It's either 1 Peter 1, 19 through 21 or 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21.
please jot it down in the comments. Let me know which one it is because that's the way, the truth, of the life of all these videos that's ever been made. It's, you're not following me. You're following the true powers of the Holy Spirit that's teaching you all these things. I promise you, a man in my statue can't put all this together. Remember it and make it make sense. It's just physically impossible. But Matthew 19, 26, Jesus beheld it to them and said unto them, With man, this is impossible. As for God, all things are possible. Y'all have a beautiful day. God bless you.